Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Drakmore Digital. I'm Mr. Drakmore, and we are trying again to date the leather jacketed daddy that is Robert. Hopefully, when you jump into this, it'll be date number two. But let's get in. So here we are. Let's continue. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. Very deadly thing to question or wonder. The nice mail person slides a couple of letters and a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Is that an innuendo? Is it? Hmm. Hey, my coupons! I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm? I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She's probably has her headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. Kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay. Just thought you'd want the big old envelope we got from HIA. Yeah. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Hmm. Father, please! I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me as she spits out a piece of the envelope. She pulls out the letter and unfolds it. Hmm. And? The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. Hmm. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. Yeah. I got in! Oh! I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god. I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Aww. <laughs> that makes me feel really good inside. Wait. Dad. I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. I think for a moment, HIA is one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Mm. So I'm a good dad. Fuck yeah. Really? Of course. Med hugs me again. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Oh, okay, sweetie. We're celebrating tonight. D dinner, your choice, whatever you want. wherever which is probably what she said in the first place or what I said in the first place Amanda and I walk along the bayside tearing into our foil wrapped burritos from the nearby food truck you could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay cost was not a determining factor please dad you know I'm a simple gal just give me a Rito with a view oh man really kid after my own heart let me tell you I can't say I'm mad Amanda and I sit on the patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. Hey. The dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID and... Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. I know. I'm just excited. Did I mention that the students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we get all the professional photo editing software for free? Oh man, that's really cool. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with similar major and interests. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. Don't even get me started on bad roommates. Mm -hmm. Oh no? I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about uh, 
Our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. <laughs> Carl ruled. Yes. Oh, they let you have an animal in the dorms if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit, or maybe a snake, or maybe both. But a snake eat a rabbit, so. Oh boy, I think I'll leave that all up to you. She's so excited, I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Huh? He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? No. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park with these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to the to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Ah. Oh, the face. Um, heart. My dad heart. Ugh. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's going to be some treacherous ice roads to cross. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Oh, Dad. Don't cry. I'm not crying. Don't worry about it. Breathe deeply. It's fine. It's okay. You're crying. Oh, you're not crying. Sorry. I I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person, and I hope you know how important you are to me. Mm, Dad, stop. You're going to make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's going to make it day sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. Love you, kiddo. Love you, too, Pops. Oh, that was really sweet. Welcome. Oh, yeah. Dads. I do got dads. Hey, it's Craig. Hey, dude. I got the runs. What? Oh, I've got just the thing. I'll head to the store and grab you a real chunky milkshake, cherry licorice, and a book of word jumbles that I find helpful in strenuous times such as these. What? Wouldn't that make it worse? Oh, it's not for the diarrhea. Milkshakes are just comforting. Wait. Why are we talking about this? But I've got the runs. I meant, like, I feel like running. Ellipses? Wanna come with me to the gym? Why do I feel less excited about that than getting you home remedies for diarrhea? Come on, man. It'll be fun. You know what? Sure. When are you doing this? There's 30 more minutes left in the Meat Hell Marathon. I'm outside now. I'm warming up. Okay, okay. At least let me see if Betty gets away from the wolves in time to get her sospretza wrapped cheesecake out of the oven. Go running. I hope that doesn't ruin my chance with the Robert! Ah! No! What did I do? Better not. Mmm. Mmm. Whoa. It's a, it's a game. The gym just installed this new virtual jogging treadmill. We'll feel like we're running outdoors. You can see the other runners on your screen too. Let's try it out together. Other runner? Will I be able to keep up? Don't worry. We're here to cheer each other on. I'll be right there with you. Just get a rhythm going. Keep your heart rate up. But don't overexert yourself. You'll do great. How? Oh, okay. Run that dad. Run that dad? What do I do? Do 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 What? What do I do? Doesn't tell me how to do this. Huh? Uh uh uh. Space. Eggplants for days. What is going on? How? Ah. Ah. I get it now, kinda. Kinda, sorta. Ah. It's really confusing.
But hey, why not, right? What am I doing? Oh, 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 oh. It goes up so fast. Oh yeah, run that eggplant. Don't want to overexert myself, but I want to get past you, Craig. Nope, uh, is that Joseph? I do want to get past you, Joseph. Ah! How do I run like this? Ah, ah, ah. Oh God. Oh my God. There we go. Okay, I think I got this now. Yeah! Eggplant! Woo! Look at that running guy. There's so many buttons you can press instead of just one. Hey, I'm going after Layton. Nice. What's up, Layton? How you doing? Let's do this. Love this. Okay, now that I figured out I only need to use one hand. That sounds dirty. Yeah. I mean, especially with eggplants. Oh, that's really the worst. It's really the worst. Let's keep doing this, though. Let's keep going. Yeah. Excuse us. Excuse us, pardon us. Bro. Bro. Eggplants. Yeah. My heart is up. I'm moving fast. Doing my best. Love it. Okay. Timing's going up, which is interesting. I think I'm doing okay, right? I don't know. Okay. Can I actually just press space very fast? I'm so confused. It's fine. Doesn't matter. Greg Razio, moving up. Later, Matt, I think. Maybe Will. Yeah! We're rocking it. We're doing it well. Okay, now we got a nice little rhythm going with two two fingers, both hands, I think. Just gotta let it chill. I apologize for the tapping that you're hearing in the fucking microphone. This is insane. Hey, it's the end. That's good. Yeah. What is going on? Bro, I plant straight through the finish. What up? Whoa! Double A S double plus. Thanks. Way to go. Welcome. You got that. I guess I do. Uh Robert. <laughs> Would like to message Robert. Gonna date Robert. I had a lot of fun with Robert the last time we hung out, but I'm beginning to wonder if he's dodging me. I tried to message him a few times, and Deadbook says he hasn't even read them. I haven't even seen him come out of his house, actually. Oh, I decided to send him one last message, figuring that this will produce the same result. Hey, man. Don't know what you've been... Whoa, that's a lot of things. Hey, man. Don't know where you've been, but we should grab a drink soon? Robert? I learned in the kitchen. I'm all caught up on work. The house is relatively clean. Maybe I should go do something nice for Amanda? Yeah. Ah, I'll bake her a favorite pie. I root through the pantry and pull out all the ingredients. This old family recipe that I used to make uh, with my grandmother when I was a kid. I lost the actual recipe card a long time ago, but I think I'll be able to remember how to bake it. I start mixing the ingredients together for the crust until I get a nice dough. I throw some cherries into a saucepan to make the filling. Normally, I don't like to multitask in the kitchen. This cherry pie is a piece of cake. Pie. It's a piece of pie. I'm making a pie. Ellipses. Aw, oh, man. I can never remember what temperature you're supposed to set the oven at. Pretty sure it's 375, but I could be wrong. Who am I kidding? I'm never wrong when it comes to this pie. I feel like I'm gonna be wrong. <laughs> My special twist on grandma's recipe includes a secret ingredient that not even Amanda knows about. It really makes the cherries extra flavorful. God, why can't I remember what the secret ingredient is? Uh, uh, it's salt, probably. Oh, it's salt, duh. Just a pinch of salt to bring out the natural sweetness of the cherries. 
Oops, I accidentally poured a little too much in. Way too much in. I'm sure it's fine. Baking is an art, and some of the most beautiful art is made from mistakes. Finally, I get the pie in the oven. How long am I supposed to leave it in there? 50 minutes? I'll just wing it. Man is going to be so excited. The kid loves a good pie. I have a seat at the kitchen table. Do a word jumble until Amanda comes home. I can hear the door slam. Slam open. Yo, Pops! What smells like pie in here? It's pie, sweetie. Amanda darts over uh, to the oven and looks inside. Yes! Hey, it's not done. Be patient. Hmm. What's your angle here? What? Hmm? Pie is an objective based confection. What are you trying to get out of me? Uh, 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 uh. Amanda, I have terrible news for you. I'm actually a pro skateboarder, an inspiring astronaut, and bank robber. The lifestyle is calling me back, and I must go. One last job. You know how it is. This pie was the only way I knew how to tell you. Well, I appreciate the years you we spent together. But a trade-up is a trade-up. Remember me when you're kicking your feet up in Ibza. Thanks for all the pie. We share a cordial handshake. I wait a few minutes before taking the pie out of the oven. I set it on the rack to cool and guard it so Amanda doesn't dig into it before it's ready. Hmm. Hmm. What? Hmm. Does it look kind of weird to you? Oh. That's just me taking an artistic license on what cherry pie means to me emotionally. I'm just saying this because, you know, it seems like you might have baked this pie incorrectly. And you're currently right now trying to pass it off as a good thing. Hmm. It's art, sweetie. Was it art when you accidentally baked a whole uncracked egg into the center of my 12th birthday cake? Uh, well, it's, uh, was it art when you tried to make brownies and accidentally created chlorine gas? What? <laughs> what the fuck did I do? <laughs> well, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Was it art when you just eat the pie, panda? Huh. I cut a few slices and sit down to eat. The cherry filling oozes out the sides. The buttery crust glistens. I watch as Amanda takes a bite. Uh, uh, what's wrong? Is it not good? Uh, Amanda witches, fans her mouth. Huh. No, no, it's just, it burned the heck out of the roof of my mouth. This pie is amazing. Sorry for doubting you. I breathe a sigh of relief and take a bite. She's right. The pie is pretty incredible, as it always is. I'm really proud of you for making this pie without burning the new house down. I got a few dad tricks up my dad's sleeves. See? Dad sleeves. It's a few tricks. Maybe fathers aren't as bumbling and stupid as the media make us out to be. Maybe we as a society should have a little more respect for fathers as a whole. Huh? Dad, your sleeve is on fire. I run to the sink, put myself out. Pride will be my undoing. Oh. Amanda and I clean up the kitchen and I play a little more living room hoops before she retreats to her room to do her homework. I go back to my word jumble. Hey, this one spells cat. The rest of the evening trickles by. We eat dinner. I help Amanda with one of her scholarship applications, and we both start getting ready for bed. <gasps> My man. Maybe. We'll see. I'm getting a little overly, overly excited. I decided to check Dad book one last time before I climb into bed. Still nothing with Robert. Oh. Huh. Hope he's okay. Turn out the lights and lie down. Of course! That's how that works. Hey, Raziel, hey. Hey, Raziel, hey. Come outside. Come outside. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> hey, Raziel, hey. Hey, Raziel. Hey, I'm outside. Come outside. Uh, what is that? I was just on the verge of falling asleep. I climb out of bed and try to identify the source of the ding. My computer screen is illuminated. illuminates the dark room. I walk over to it. Better turn off. And I notice what's happening on screen. Don't make me honk. I will honk. Get out of here. I look out the window, and sure enough, there's Robert leaning up against his pickup truck in my driveway. Okay, I swoon a little. Just a little. But I still put out the door. Open the door and try to figure out what's going on. Hey. Hey? Hey. Hey. <laughs> God damn it, Danny. Woo! Woo! What a hang. I was kind of sleeping. Uh -huh. That's no fun. Hmm. Come hang out. 
I argue that sleeping is very fun, but I don't have to be anywhere in the morning. Might as well live a little. Sure. Cool. By going out like that? Like to realize that I am, in fact, not wearing pants. Huh. I mean, I don't mind. Excuse me? You don't mind? Right. What? Well, one sec. I run inside and throw on my going out pants, shoes, and a jacket. Grab my keys and meet Robert back outside. Hey. Mm. <laughs> Woohoo! Ready. Ready. Mm. Hop in. I jump into the passenger seat of his old pickup truck. Old red pickup truck, for that matter. I have to move a few empty cigarette packs and a gas station receipts out of the way before I can sit. Robert silently starts the car, and we drive out with a cul-de-sac. Oh. Damn, dude. You're just hitting all the right buttons there, Robert. You like Tom Waits? Yes, I do. I think this would be a ref. I like Tom Waits. I can't say I love Tom Waits, so I bet that's a reference to Tom Waits. But uh, we're gonna say we love Tom Waits just because. Oh, I bet if I said it, I would gotten eggplants though. I love. Before I can answer, Robert turns up the radio. Yep, that's Tom Waits, all right. He lights a cigarette, cracks the window. We drive together in silence. So where are we going? Robert doesn't respond. Robert. Oh, I heard you. He still doesn't answer my question. I look out the window. I notice Robert's taking us to the highway. I my thumbs. Okay. Well, whatever I got myself into, it looks like I'm in for the night. I settle in my seat and watch the streetlights pass by. I glance over to Robert, who's driving intently. He looks tired, as he always does. There's something a bit more there that I just can't place. I want to say nothing. Silence. Enjoying the silence. It's okay. Yes! All them eggplants. I remember what Robert said about hating small talk, and I decided to keep my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. He noticed me staring. Uh -huh. Stop looking so nervous. Uh, I'm not nervous. I'm a little nervous. Oh. Just hang on. We're almost there. Almost where? I have no idea where we are. I think we're moving at a slight incline. But I'm not sure. I'm not so sure. We eventually come to a stop. Robert gets out of the car, and I sit for a second, unsure if he wants me to get out too. What are you waiting for? I hastily exit the car. Robert sits on the bed of his truck and pats the space next to him. I sit down, taking the view. From the hill overlooking the city, skyline against the bay. The cool night air rustles some trees near us, and lights blink in the distance. Off to the side, I can see an entrance a dense forest. Man, it's all so gorgeous. This is where I come to masturbate. <laughs> what? I'm kidding. What's wrong with you? I... This is my little spot where I come to think. It's nice. Oh. You can see the whole city from up here. That gives you some uh, perspective. Robert reaches behind him and pulls out something from under the, his jacket glints in the moonlight and suddenly realize what it is. Oh shit, that's a knife! Oh! Please don't stab me! Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a small piece of wood. Please don't stab me with that either! I... Robert takes the knife to the piece of wood and starts carving it. Oh. I breathe an audible sigh of relief as Robert looks at me sideways. Did you think I was going to stab you just now? What? No. I hate to break it to you. But I did, in fact, bring you out here to harvest your organs. Ellipses? Ha ha, ha ha. Now I'm gonna play along. Yeah? Well, you think you caught me in your trap, but I knew. For years, I've been putting the most vile junk food in my body in preparation for this day. Come at me, friend, and reap what you will. Hey. Two steps ahead of you all times. That's how I operate. Mm. <laughs> Nothing gets past you, huh? I... Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a folding knife that he opens and hands to me. Uh -oh. I'm gonna warn you. 
Last guy that had a knife fight with lost three fingers because he didn't know the eight basic rules of knife fight. You're familiar, correct? I honestly can't tell when you're kidding. Mm -hmm. I'm so many levels of irony deep that I've forgotten what humor is. <laughs> he and I laugh. Have you ever whittled before? Considering I'm not a grandpa, no. Oh, rude, dude. What do you mean by that? Well, I just thought that you would have a block of wood shipped to you along with your first social security kit check. Mm. Raziel, I have you know that whittling is a time-honored tradition enjoyed by both the young and old alike. That you're dismissing it before you've even tried it speaks volumes about your character. However, because I've gotten to know you for some time, I've come to think of you as think of us as friends. I'm willing to attribute it to ignorance instead of malice. Hmm. What I'm trying to say is, go get a <laughs> go get that stick. Robert motions to a good-looking stick on the ground, perfect for potential whittling. I pick it up. Huh. Most important thing to remember whilst whittling is to cut with the grain, not against it. If you get against the grain, it's going to splinter. It's actually solid information to know, if you ever choose to whittle, obviously. Isn't the most important thing safety? Hey. Ellipses. Huh. No. Getting hurt comes with territory. Look at my damn hands. I look at his damn hands. They're calloused and covered in little white scars. Very nice hands. Huh. You can't make a stick omelet without breaking a few hand eggs. That is a fucking phrase, man. <laughs> Just... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Knife that wood? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, what am I making? Oh, it's a pencil? It's a pencil. It's a sharp stick. Carefully don't poke yourself with that. You made a sharp stick. I did. Are we knifing this wood too? Excellent. Ooh. Ooh. Is it also going to be a sharp stick? Oh no, this one looks a little. Ah. Tell me about this one. <laughs> it's a tongue depressor. I should put that in my first aid kit. Never know when you might need one. You made a tongue depressor. Ooh, gonna knife this wood too. Knife it so hard. Knife in it. Uh-oh. 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 Hey! What's the story here? Hmm. Something make you look tougher? It's working. I think you could take me in a fight. Probably. <laughs> you, get, you made a tough guy accessory. This is fun. Yeah, let's knife this wood. Let's knife it. Uh, uh, uh. Hey! Mm -hmm. What's this? I mean, yeah. It's a Ouija board planchette with no holes, so you can't even tell what it's pointing to. Yeah. I guess you could have the front pointed. It's not how it works. Don't worry about it. Now all you need to do is carve up the board and we're set. And also, maybe carve a ghost. You made a Ouija board planchette. I get to make more? I'm so lucky. Wee! Uh-oh. I have no... Nice form. What is that supposed to be? Spitting image of you. You've made a masterpiece! <laughs> huh? Oh, shit. E -e 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 -e. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What is this going to be? I have no idea. It's a it's a stick. Interesting. What do we have here? Hmm. It's an ambidextrous sharp stick. It's a stick. <laughs> You've made a chopstick. Ambidextrous. But solo also, so it doesn't really work. Ooh, it's a big piece. Hey, I already see a piece here. It's like carving marble, right? It's not that the thing in marble isn't there already. Just have to let it out. 
feel like I'm doing the same. What the fuck is this? If you keep this up, you'll be, win you'll be a whittling pro in no time. Oh, this is definitely a duck. No, it's new for, uh, no, it's a duck. Yeah, it's a duck. Maybe next time you can carve up some wooden bread crusts to feed them. You've made a cool duck. Bye, duck. Mm, 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 mm. Carving, carving. What the fuck? I'm getting better every time. Holy shit, look at that. Beautiful handiwork. What do you call it? Uh, uh, uh. Sir Horsington the Brave? Fuck yeah. A brave and noble name for a brave and noble creature. You've made a beautiful gift for Amanda. Hey, hey. <laughs> Robert and I sit in silence for a while, carving our pieces of wood. I think I'm getting the hang of this. It's actually kind of relaxing. I glance over to see what Robert's working on. He's carving a smaller wooden knife. Ah! All distracted, knife sliced into my thumb. Blood gushes all over my little wooden carving. Um... Robert is lost in carving, doesn't notice me bleeding everywhere. Uh, Robert still doesn't notice. Robert, I'm dying. I'm bleeding to death. Mm. Robert finally looks over. Hey. He reaches into his jacket again. Jesus, how much stuff does he keep? It? Does this guy keep in there? He pulls out a uh, red bandana. He wraps it around my thumb. Hold tight. He hops off the truck, and I can hear him rummaging around in his car. He comes back a moment later with a well-stocked first aid kit. Robert. Kira wipes all the blood off my hand and swipes a bit of antiseptic onto the cut. With surprising gentleness, he places a bit of gauze on the wound and wraps it all up. I don't know. You okay? Yeah, uh, I'm good. He hands me what's left of the tube of antiseptic. Uh -huh. Make sure you keep that cut clean. It's oddly touching and a little sexy. I guess I'm a real whittler now. That you are. Be careful, though. They're attracted to the smell of blood. Wait, what? What's attracted to the smell of blood? Mm. Cryptids. Tons of them out there, you know. Crypt cryptids? Like, Mothman stuff? Uh. Mothman's bullshit, but yeah. This stands a hotbed for cryptozoological occurrences. You're... Joking. Mm. Oh, oh, how I wish I was. I I'm a skeptic myself, or at least I thought I was. There are things in these woods that can't, we can't possibly comprehend. I think about my entire time in the city. Aside from the occasional stray coyote, I don't think it's too bad. Uh -oh. You ever hear of the Dover Ghost? I don't think so. Oh. Well, let me tell you a story. I was out in the woods here on a weekend camping trip with Betsy. You don't know Betsy, but she's a big pup, pit bull. Real intimidating. I feel safe around her. First night goes without incident. I get some solitude. Betsy gets to be wherever she wants. All good stuff. Second day. I get the idea into my head that I can hike deeper into the woods. Probably against my better judgment, but hey, we're just having a fun camping trip, right? So me and Betsy start marching in the morning. Whoa, whoa. It's a little late. We set up camp. But it's different this night. Real quiet. I can't hear the birds, the crickets, squirrels, nothing. Dead silent. Whoa. And it happens. I hear the most unholy growl I've ever heard in my life right outside my tent. Me and Betsy, we go investigate. We look around the clearing. Nobody's there. Oh. Now there's this feeling. Not sure if I can quite describe it. I know someone, something, is watching us. Betsy, though, she's scared. Never seen her like that. And when she's scared, I know I should be too. And then I see it in the distance. A man, but if something that didn't know what a man was supposed to look like made it. It just looked wrong. Big, arms too long for its body, black eyes. And just stood there and stared at me. Mm. Then, it disappears. Everyone yelped from Betsy and I turn around to check on her. She's gone. 
thin air and sleep it all in my tent that night. I don't think I've ever slept right since. Flipsies? Wow. Robert. Hey. I'm so sorry. Hmm. They say that if you listen closely on quiet nights, nights just like tonight, you hear the howl of the Dover ghost. Ellipses? A howl resonates through the woods. Doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's so guttural. Even from far away. Something about it makes my skin crawl. Whoa, whoa. Okay, Robert. R real funny. I turn to look at Robert. He's white as a sheet. You're messing with me, right? Really? I was messing with you. Up until literally just now. I totally made up that camping story. I straight my eyes to scan the forest line, trying to see where that howl originated from. Off in the distance, I see something. It's so, it's so far away. I can barely make out the shape. It looks human. It's dragging something. Um, do, do you see that? I don't know. We should go. We should go. Robert and I slowly back away and get in the truck. He turns off his headlights and he makes, his way, makes a slow crawl away. Back onto the road. I'm too scared to look back. What was that? The Dover ghost, I guess. I chuckle nervously. This time, he doesn't seem like he's messing with me. Or maybe someone illegally dumping garbage on a wildlife preserve? Mm. Yeah. That's the story we'll tell ourselves. Really? We sit in silence for a while longer fear of whatever that was slowly subsiding as we get close to the city. Oh. Thanks for coming out. This is fun. Ellipses. Oh. Sorry I haven't been in touch. I've just been in a way lately. I had to get out of the house. Ellipses. Oh. I had to be around somebody. You doing okay, man? Yeah. Robert thinks for a second lights another cigarette. Ellipses. Hey. Been doing a lot of thinking. It takes a long drag. Uh. As I get older, I feel more and more that I'm just drowning in the sea of regret. I was so busy chasing after these things that I thought would make me happy. I didn't think about anyone else. All I cared about was myself. I didn't even think. I... Robert stops. I wait for him to finish his thought. But he just stares at the road. Maybe I'm just built like this. Maybe I do it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice that I'm as unhappy as I am. I try to think of something to say. I remember all the times in my life when I've been sad. There's a great many of them. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. Something I held on to and kept me going. Oh. But there's something so resigned about the way Robert's talking. Uh, I don't really like any of these options. I'm glad you told me. It must have taken a lot. It must have taken a lot for you to to want to tell somebody this. Oh. You're a mysterious guy, Robert. You don't have to be. Do you ever huh. wish you were a better father? I think about it for a second. All the time. You can read all the parenting books you want, but nothing will ever prepare you for raising a child. There's so much stuff I regret, or wish that I could have done better. But I don't have the answers. I don't know if anyone does. Hey. It's funny. I look at you and your relationship with your daughter. It seems perfect. It isn't. Mm -hmm. He's you there for her. I stare out the window at the blur of passing trees. I just hope I'm a better father to my kid than my dad was to me. What'd your dad do? It's more about what he didn't do. He was quiet, stoic. Don't think he ever once told me that he loved me. He cared more about his work than he ever did about me or my mom. Lipsies. Hmm. Do you hate him? No, I used to. But after I became a parent, I just kind of feel bad for him. He missed out on my whole childhood. When I think about all the happiest moments of my life, 
They're all with Amanda and Alex. And he just wasn't there. Ooh, four dot ellipses. Ooh. It hurt like hell when I had to leave him to die. <laughs> God damn it. Fuck. <laughs> Lost it. <laughs> it hurt like hell when I had to leave him to die in that Belarusian prison. Really? What? I turned and smile at him. No. He's retired in Florida with my mom. We go there every Christmas. <laughs> Boom! Break of the tension. We both break out in laughter. He pats me on the shoulder. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow bigger. Robert drops me off at my place. As I'm about to close the passenger door, I realize that I still have Robert's pocket knife in my jacket. I pull it out and offer it back to him. Ah, uh, uh, you hold on to that. Never know when you might need it. Good night, Robert. Have a safe drive home. Robert smirks and pulls away. Then he immediately pulls into his driveway, which is one over for mine. He gets out and waves. <laughs> it's dumb. <laughs> it's dumb and cute. <laughs> I tiptoe into my house, careful not to wake up Amanda. Whoa, where'd you come from? Aww. I look around and spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. Ooh. I thought you were sleeping. Oh, uh, Robert woke me up to go cryptid hunting? Ellipses? Yeah. You know the Mothman is bullshit, right? Amanda Lang. You know what? It's fine. Huh. Think about the conversation I had with Robert in the car as Amanda starts walking towards her room. Hey, Amanda? Hmm. She stops. I love you. Hmm. It's weird when you say it outright and sincerely like that. But I love you too. Huh. Night. I chuckle to myself and finally decide to go to bed. Dad tip 18 always carry a pocket knife. Day complete! What up? Woo! So much crime. <laughs> so much cryptid. Boom! S rag. Rank? Rack? S rack. Yeah, that's the word for it. S rank. What up? Well, cool. That's two dates in. I think there's only three. So, for now, we're going to call it here. This has been so much fucking fun. As always. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm having a fucking blast. I think we're almost done with this series. And that's super cool. Uh, even though, as it's been this whole time, Pride Month is way far gone now. But, if you still want to do something cool for the community, I have a few places you can donate to to make, you know, a difference as much as you want to or as much as you can. You got the Trevor Project, the Transgender Law Center, the Pride Foundation, and Outside In. All great places that can always use our help. So, if you like this video, you want to do some help because of it, feel free to drop down in the description and check any of those out. Otherwise, do all the YouTube things. Like, comment, subscribe. Hey, even hit that bell if you'd like to. We should have one more of these videos, if not two, coming out soon enough. And yeah. If you like, uh, hey, if you like me and you want to follow me on my socials, it's Drachmore Digital at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I stream on Twitch at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Come join. I've been doing art streams, and it's been super fun. For now all, thank you so much for watching again. And don't worry, you'll be seeing me soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>